This recording is made for the Library of Congress uh, Veterans History Committee. It's made in Marietta, Georgia. Uh, I am Jack W. Boone, the moderator. I am with the Golden K Kiwanis Club of Marietta, Georgia. Okay. Today we're interviewing a veteran of... Please give us your name. My name is John E. Thomason. Where were you uh, born and raised, John? I was born and raised in Pickens County, Georgia. Okay, uh, when did you go into service? I went into service June 12th of 45. What, uh, what type, what service were you in, the Army or Air Force? I was in the Army. Okay, what was your serial number? My serial number is 4413-2242. What was the highest rank you attained while you were in the service? Only a PFC. What was the name of your outfit? Well, uh, originally when I went overseas, I went into the PBS uh, service in uh, Naples, Italy. Okay, John, let's go back now. When you first went in the service, uh, where were you sent from the po point where you were drafted? I was inducted at... Uh, Fort McPherson, went to Camp Wheeler, and did my basic training in Camp Wheeler, Georgia. And after you finished your basic training, where did you go? I went uh, directly uh, to the port of embarkation in New York and went directly to Naples, Italy. Did you go over on a troop ship? Or? Went over on a uh, troop ship, which was a Randolph aircraft carrier converted to a troop ship. I might add that we went overseas through one of the worst storms recorded on the Atlantic in the last hundred years. It was pretty rough traveling then. We were broken down at two different points in our travels overseas due to the storm. Okay, then after you landed in Naples, what happened then? After I landed in Naples, uh, unfortunately, I spent the next uh, 24 days in the hospital recuperating from the cold and uh, everything I'd gotten going overseas. Okay, the, uh, so you were right at the latter part of World War II. Right. Uh, the Germany surrendered just about the time I completed my basic training, so we went to Naples then as occupational troops. What was your job assignment? My first job assignment was driving a guard truck. I worked that for about three months, and they'd taken me off of that and put me working with a PW camp guarding German PWs. I was in charge of uh, ration distribution and uh, sick call for the prisoners and things of that nature. Okay, uh, John, did, uh, uh, during the day, every day, did you uh, have a regular routine or were you assigned uh, different uh, projects to take care of or what? Uh, basically, while I was in charge of uh, working with the PWs, I had to make uh, sick call, carry any sick prisoners out of town to another place, to a, a hospital, to have them checked out and everything. I reported in every morning at 8 o'clock, did my clerical duties and things of that nature. And uh, I had a pretty well set routine. Was, uh, did any prisoners escape during your tenure? I never lost a prisoner the whole time that I was working that uh, detail. What was the food like uh, where you were? We had uh, uh, relatively good food. It was basically military, army chow, but we also were subject to get uh, some vegetables and stuff from uh, the Italians in the area. Uh, did you have plenty of supplies? We had uh, very good supplies at that time. Did you feel any pressure or stress uh, while you were working with the prisoners of war? Uh, 
Really, I didn't, because all the prisoners, uh, it was amazing how many of the German PWs spoke English and were very cordial and very nice. After uh, you were there for, John, did any of the prisoners uh, try to escape uh, in the latter part of it? I know they got a little tired, they know the war is over and they want to go home. Uh, what did they do? Uh, we had, I had no problem whatsoever with uh, prisoners uh, making any attempt to escape while I was working at the PW camp. Now later I knew of cases where they did try to escape from different prisoner of war camps around Naples, Italy. Did, uh, were they processing them and letting them go home? Very few were being processed out at that time. They, uh, there seemed to be quite a backlog of paperwork and everything, and uh, getting uh, the prisoners prepared to be released back into Germany. Uh, were they allowed to have any visitors? I don't recall any visitors ever coming into our camps at any time for the German PWs. What did you think of the officers and fellow soldiers you served with there? I, uh, I had a very good uh, relationship with uh, my officers and uh, fellow soldiers. We, we had no problems. Uh, uh, with uh, any of the officers, they had no problems with us. Everything went very smooth while I was in PBS. Do you uh, recall the day that your service ended? Uh, well, uh, yes, I re recall whenever I was uh, returned to the States and was uh, discharged up in New Jersey. Well, actually, I wasn't discharged at that time. I served... Uh, I believe it's 60 days still in military after I come home. In other words, I, I got a furlough at the end of my time of service and was then discharged after I got back home. So you received your discharge after you got home? Yes, I did. Yeah. Well, uh, you live here in Atlanta now? I live here in Marietta Marietta, today. Georgia. Mm -hmm. and after I come out of service, I went back to Pickens County. <clears throat> what did you do in those days and weeks afterward? After I come out of service, I, I uh, first tried to uh, go back to the old line of what I did before going into service. Farming and uh, things of that nature, I found that I, out that uh, there's no way I could make it at that. So. Shortly afterwards, I went to North Georgia Trade School at Clarksville. Uh, where was that school again? Clarksville, Georgia. What did you uh, What did you train in there? I taken radio and television repair. Completed a course in less than the required time. Was your education supported by the GI Bill? Yes, it was. Uh -huh. Did you make any close friendships while you were in the service? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, uh, actually, after I went, I left the PBS and went into the 88th Division, which was a infantry outfit. I was then assigned to uh, Anna Tank Company, 350th Infantry Regiment of the 88th Division. And did you uh, did you continue any of those relationships with people that you served with? I contacted one of my uh, ex uh, soldiers that I served with uh, about three years ago, I believe it was. He lives in Mississippi. He stayed in for I think uh, thirty years. Did. Uh do you belong to any veterans organizations? Not at the present. Uh, after I come home from service, I joined the Veterans of Foreign Wars, and uh, uh, I had an active membership in that for about 10, 12 years. 
So what did you do as a career after the war? After taking my radio and television training at uh, Clarksville, Georgia, I went to work for uh, Brown Radio and Television in Atlanta, worked there a very short while, and then worked for Sears Roebucking Company for a short period of time, then went back to Pickens County and uh, started a television shop of my own. Uh, did your time in service and experience affect your life? Well, yes, I think it did uh, to a certain extent. That uh, it, it probably helped me quite a bit about uh, the business of uh, doing uh, office work and things of that nature, which I had never been exposed to before when in service. Oh. Uh, John, is there anything you'd like to add to this uh, tape now, just uh, your thoughts? Well, uh, I might add that after I worked in radio and television a number of years, I come to Marietta and later become an instructor at uh, Chattahoochee Technical School, teaching radio and television, and later telecommunications and fiber optics. So I've had a very good life in, in the field of electronics. And I've probably enjoyed my teaching experience more than anything that I've done in my whole lifetime. How long uh, did you retire from that? I retired after 15 years of that. I retired in 1989. John, thank you very much for this interview, and uh, thank you very much for serving your country.